Similarly, when a case between a Muslim and a Jew was brought before Hazrat Umar, the second caliph, the Jew was found to be innocent. His due right was given to him and the case decided in his favor. This is a brief description of the peaceful teaching of Islam in which the Ahmadiyya community is rooted today and which, is, which it advocates to others. If with the full knowledge of this teaching anyone accuses us of being deviant, then we leave the matter with God Almighty. We have been advised by the founder of the Ahmadiyya community not to answer cruelty with cruelty because this is ignorance. The purpose of Islam was to eliminate ignorance, not to spread it. I would like to make one thing clear here. The declaration of war under certain circumstances is permitted in Islam, but this permission is not for any group or organization. This permission is strictly limited to a Muslim government that is being victimized, and this permission is only for the purposes of defense. Allah the Almighty knew that Islam would spread and there would be many Islamic governments. That is why the Holy Quran enjoins that when two Muslim governments are involved in, in a war, then other Muslim governments should support the oppressed. And when the oppressor surrenders, the loser should not thereafter be made a permanent target of brutality and cruelty because such behavior would, uh, behavior would be unfair. When a nation is treated unjustly, the reaction it shows dis destroys the peace. This is such a golden principle that the governments of this age, whether Muslims or non-Muslim, need to adopt it. If we look around with honesty, we will notice that the prevalent injustice injustices are due to the imposition of unfair conditions, sanctions and restrictions on the losing nations or countries. Nowadays, a burning topic that is under discussion everywhere is how to establish lasting peace and curb extremism. Even in this neighborhood, discussions are being carried out. This is why some of our MPs have gone because their pagers did not allow them to sit here. But unless and until a God-fearing solution is thought of, no permanent peace can be established. After this brief discussion, I revert to the fundamental purpose of the establishment of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. As I have already explained by the use of Quranic examples, the teachings of Islam are not defected, nor did the founder of Islam, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, ever commit injustice toward any nation. Of course, whenever there was transgression against the Muslims, he took up the kajal by divine command and his retaliation was to establish peace and justice. The founder of Islam, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, had also prophesied that a time would come when the Muslims would endorse wrong explanations and would distort the true teaching of Islam. Although the Holy Quran would be available in its uncorrupted form, that would be the time for the advent of the promised Messiah who would display the true teachings of Islam. Many signs for that time have been mentioned and I have mentioned earlier uh, an important sign. Therefore, today the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, according to this prophecy of the Holy Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, accepts Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian as the promised Messiah. And following the Quranic teachings as explained by him, it is engaged in creating peace in the world and leaving no stone unturned to help the suffering humanity. 
We are using all means and resources available to us to bring man nearer to God. Because if human beings can really recognize their creator today, they will be able to fulfill their responsibilities towards their fellow beings. Today, we and we alone can say that the book that was revealed to the Holy Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 1400 years ago or 1500 years ago, is still in its original condition with not an iota of change. And it is the unique excellence of Islam that according to the divine promise, Allah has bestowed Islam with the guide inspired directly by Allah in the form of the promised Messiah, who has brilliant, brilliantly presented to us the true teachings of Islam. What is the definition of jihad that the founder of the Ahmadiyya community gave to us a hundred years ago? He says, I have come to you with an order. Jihad with the sword has ended from this time forward, but the jihad of purifying your souls must continue. I do not say this of my own accord. This is indeed the will of God. Then he says, he will lay down war. That is to say, when the Messiah comes, he will put an end to religious wars. Accordingly, I command all those who have joined my ranks to refrain from all such thoughts, to purify their hearts, to foster sympathy, and to be compassionate towards the suffering. They should spread peace on earth because that will cause their faith to spread in return. They should not entertain doubts about how this will transpire, just as God Almighty has, without the usual means of intervention, use the resources of the earth to create modern inven uh, inventions and satisfy our physical needs by making trains that outturn, outrun uh, horses. He will, in the same way, unaided by human hands, use his angels, angels to fill, uh, fulfill spiritual needs. Great heavenly signs will be seen and numerous flashes of light will open many eyes. Therefore, if today we are busy 24 hours a day broadcasting the divine message in various languages through our uh, television channels, we are doing it because of the man of God who received the divine training. If we are trying to help the suffering humanity in the field of health and education, or trying to procure clean water or food for the disaster victims, we are doing it because of our true understanding of the Islamic teachings provided us by the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. As you may already know, today we are celebrating the completion of 100 years of Ahmadiyya as it has been said earlier by some of the speakers. That is the succession of, uh, after the demise of the Prophet Messiah al-Islam. For the last hundred years, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has been serving the world under the guidance of these true teachings of Islam and has been achieving these lofty objectives. The Ahmadiyya Jamaat has been serving humanity in need, irrespective of caste, color, and creed. We are providing health and education in the remotest part of poor countries of Africa. We are rehabilitating wells and connect, connecting water supply in those places where governments, institutions, and aid agencies had refused to help.